Yay Networks. I am in charge. No, you are not. As the alpha. <laughs> this is only funny because Shane is so not the alpha. Like people <laughs> who would just take that out of context would be like, what the ah, He hell? sounds really rude. Yeah. Well, there's some people out there who are like, Shane is like, like, like yeah, that's he true. is. That's right. He's the mate. A G L E S E Eagles. And it's getting better and better. Uh, at yes. the Eagles chant, we had it out in full force yesterday. We did. Celebrating the first win of the season of my beloved Philadelphia Eagles. Wow. <laughs> and I wore an Eagles t shirt. You did, which made me fall more and more in love with you. I went to buy a sweatshirt last night, but they're sold out in the big sizes. Oh no! Like I Eagles? And yeah, Eagles the, the Abercrombie. How they have the all the sports teams. I was going to buy the Eagles to be. This like, episode is not about sports, everyone. Don't worry. No, it's not, <laughs> and not at all. <laughs> I would not sign up for that. I'm just letting Shane know that I tried to buy an Eagles sweatshirt that I had seen. Uh huh. But it's like I could get a medium, I think. But I appreciate the effort. <laughs> yeah, me being like <laughs> I would have, but I didn't. Well, you have a T-shirt, and as long as you wear that every damn day. Oh. And spending on a few non-game days. So most days. Most days. For the next six months. <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> All right. We have a few life updates. We do. The first of which is that we are delaying our trip to Los Angeles. We are. I don't know if we've like specifically said that we're spending some time this fall in Los Angeles. I think we did say that at some point, but we were supposed to leave September 1st in our minds. That was our day. Yes, but as has been the case all year, it feels <laughs> like, IVF yeah. is once again messing up our plans. In, yeah, and it's not even like, it doesn't matter what the specifics are, but yeah, we basically have to push it. So now we pushed it to October 1st And we're, we're doing a another semen analysis. Yeah. For me to see where my numbers are at. Yeah. And this is like my sixth or seventh mm -hmm. semen analysis. Yeah. At this clinic, I'm beginning to worry that the people who like facilitate, you know, in the lab mm -hmm. are like wondering why I'm there <laughs> so often. Well, they sure do feel bad for you. Is this part of his treatment or <laughs> is he doing this? For fun. They're like, who is this man? <laughs> no, they all know us, and they wish they us do. luck. <laughs> Every time they're like, we're, we're, we're rooting for you. For you. Yeah. They're, so, they're so nice. It's really, like, where we go is, is a really nice place, but it's we're really, not talking about that today. No, that's just one life update. Uh, that's one reason why we're delayed. Yeah. Uh, it ended up kind of working out for the best because yes. your parents, Liz and George, mm -hmm. are in Poland. They are. For George's first big trip yep. in a while. My dad hasn't been there since we lived there when I was like two. Yeah. And so he's it's been always talking years. about wanting to go back. Yeah. He, he's wanted to go back. He's not big into travel, though. He doesn't like to fly. He doesn't like to do long drives. He likes to be home. Uh, but he kept saying that he wanted to go. And so my mom was like, if I book a plane ticket, you're, you're going to have to actually get on the plane. So this has been like in the works for a long time. Yes. And as it's been getting closer and closer, we're all kind of like kidding with George. Like, you're going to back out? You still can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we know you don't love traveling. And all of that to say, for that, it, like, with that in mind. Yeah. They had maybe the most annoying yes. beginning to their trip. <laughs> we dropped them off at the airport uh, for their flight, which was at like 3.50, I think, 3.50 p.m. Well, yeah, we dropped we had them, them off yeah. at like 1.30. About 15 minutes after we dropped them off, they get a notification that their flight has been delayed by an hour. Oh, bummer. Oh, uh, bummer. But that's okay. Like, go to a restaurant. It's fine. As they're there, you know, they're there another hour. The flight gets delayed another hour. That's a little concerning because now they're, they had a layover. It's, it's close to missing their next flight, which actually takes them to Poland. They yeah. had a layover, I think, in like Newark. Mm -hmm. uh, they are waiting around, waiting around. We finally get a text. It kept getting bumped like 15 minutes. <laughs> Finally, the flight was just canceled altogether. At like 6 p.m. Yep. After they'd sat in the airport. All day. All day long. Yep, waiting, waiting, waiting for their flight, and then it was canceled. And uh, 
they waited in line to like talk to a representative of the airline to figure out what to do. And the people in front of them were being booked on flights like three days later. My parents were like, no, yeah. like that's, that's half of our trip. Like we have to, you know, like we need to be there now. We have all this stuff booked. And for a trip that's so far, yes. if you lose a few days, you're really cutting into like I know. your jet lag period. You know, yes. you, just, you really lose a lot if you miss a few days. Yes. So finally they got rebooked just the next day, which was great on a very similar flight. So they, they went there to the airport for the second time we dropped them off and this time the flight went. So they arrived yesterday. They are in Poland. They're having a great time. They are eating delicious food. That I am very jealous of. I'm so, I'm just really jealous that they're there in general, but they did it. And George did it. Yep. Props to George. Yep. Uh, so I'm, I'm just jealous. I know. Me I'm too. really jealous that we're not there. <laughs> <laughs> they're like sending us photos. And I'm like, oh my God. I know, but we're holding <sighs> down the fort here at home. So don't worry. We are. I'm the man of the house now. Okay. It's a weird thing to say. I am in charge. No, you are not. As the alpha. <laughs> this is only funny because Shane is so not the alpha. Like people <laughs> who would just take that out of context would be like, what the ah, He hell? sounds really rude. Yeah. Well, there's some people out there who are like, 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 yeah, that's he true. is. That's right. He's the man. <laughs> that's true. That is not Shane, though. I think Chloe is in charge. Chloe's in charge and dictating what we do. Yes, she's every checking hour. the perimeter of the home. She's waiting for her grandparents to come back, checking their bedrooms. <laughs> Uh, and we're just kind of here to support her. We are chilling and we are working. Yeah. And that is our third life update. Yep. We have finished the manuscript for our book and turned it into our editors. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I mean, we're almost done, Shane. We're just, we're we done. have to add in for like all another chapter or two. So. <laughs> I don't like to say that we're done, but we did turn in like 99% of the book to our editor. It is out of our hands. And the whole you know, editing, right now. yeah, the whole editing phase is going to be a whole nother giant, yeah, you know, thing. Exactly. But for right now, yeah, our first draft is essentially done. Yes. And we feel very good after yes. working on that for three, four years. Yes. It's been a project. Way too long. But we thought to celebrate... The end of our first draft. Yep. We would spend the rest of the episode reading for you one of our favorite chapters that mm -hmm. will be in this book. Yeah. Uh, it is a saga of an experience that Hannah and I had. You know what? Let's take a break and we'll get into it. <laughs> it is Your Mayhem to a T. It is. So we will take a break and we'll be right back. Last year, I switched health insurance plans and companies because of us beginning the whole IVF process. That was a really fun, <laughs> just you know, not stressful at all. Yeah, it's. I mean, health insurance is so fun. <laughs> so fun. Uh, but finding new doctors that take your new health insurance plan is always such a pain in the butt because you want to click with them and get along with them. You want them to be available and they have to take this insurance plan, it is not easy. No, but ZocDoc makes it very, very easy. Yes. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated, patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. For someone that really doesn't like making phone calls, like Hannah, yes. it's so convenient to be able to find all this information online. That's the best part, hands <laughs> down. So next time either of us needs to find a doctor or a specialist, this is hands down what we'll be using. I'm sure it will be soon. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Junkyard and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash Junkyard. ZocDoc.com slash Junkyard. Okay, we are back. I have the chapter here on my phone ready to be read. You are in for a treat. Those of you who have heard our episodes before know that Hannah has a reading voice that will not your socks off. Oh, you, I feel like you're setting it up way too high. I mean, she is an idyllic reading voice. I don't know about so that. So I might fall asleep just from the soothing nature of her voice. But oh, okay. this chapter should not put you to sleep. No, this is, it starts it, off strong. It's written from my perspective. Yes. But Hannah and I, as we did with all the chapters, wrote it together. Yes. So shall we begin? Let's begin. I believe the title of this chapter 
is going to be the groping. <laughs> but this is about so much more than the groping. It is. Like, the groping is just a detail. I think the alternative ch- title is Ableism in New York City. That's boring. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on it, guys. Okay. <laughs> it was a passionate grope, yet somehow gentle and reassuring. Her silky fingertips traced the curves of my iron jawline, dancing along like whimsical fairy ballerinas. Iron, Pause. iron jawline, Shane? Pause. Is anyone else turned on? Okay. I am. The stubble of my beard bristled as her hand concluded its sensual journey down my face. For the briefest moment, entranced by the tenderness of her palm and the softness of her cooing, what a nice boy. Such a lovely nice boy. I forgot where I was and what was happening. My ecstasy quickly vanished as I snapped back to reality. I was in the middle of an airport lounge, waiting in line for the beer machine with Hannah and her mom, who, along with dozens of other travelers, were staring at me with faces of sheer horror as one of the airline employees stroked my face and called me a nice boy. It all happened so fast. Before I could even process the embarrassment, I blurted out, I'm a man, I'm 27, but the offender was already moving towards the buffet to continue refilling a pot of lentil soup. Do you remember, pause, Yeah. do you remember me going, I'm a man? <laughs> Did you actually say uh-huh. that? <laughs> I don't remember that. I mean, I remember the groping very, very vividly. I think I said it more like, I'm a man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't I don't think you yelled I'm a man. I think you were terrified. <laughs> I whimpered. I'm you a, whimpered. I'm, I'm a, a man. I'm a man. <laughs> I'm a man, not a baby. <laughs> but I'm she not a was baby. stroking my face. Yes. Literally here, I imitate yes. for people that are watching on YouTube. Rubbing me, going, Oh sweet boy. Yeah, like Oh sweet, like, sweet boy. You, uh, like you know, like, <laughs> like someone's thinking, you know how you like rub your chin? But like if you do it to someone else again and again. <laughs> Okay, let's keep going. I looked at Hannah and Liz with wide eyes. They both had their hands over their mouths, probably in an effort to hide both laughter and much angrier outbursts. From the very beginning of our relationship, Hannah and I have often dealt with blatant ableism when we're out in public together. People address Hannah when meaning to address me. What does he want to eat? People pray over me with no regard for my personal space or autonomy, let alone the fact that maybe I don't want to be healed by their deity of choice. People ask if we are siblings or if she is the one taking care of him. It happens a lot, and it stems from a severe lack of experience and understanding of disability. But this instance in the airport had to take the cake for the most infantilizing of them all. Holy shit, said Hannah. How do you file a grievance with the Department of Justice? (laughs) What kind of beer does the lovely nice boy want, joked Liz, holding out an empty glass and gesturing to the beer tap. For the rest of that day, you and your mom... Referred to me as the lovely nice boy. Everything. Yeah. What would you like, lovely nice boy? Little baby boy. <laughs> These encounters were not rare for us or for anyone with a disability. So we were able to brush them off fairly easily. Little did we know this was just the tip of an ableism iceberg and our ship was barreling towards it. A little we- Titanic reference for you. Yeah. Too soon? We were in for quite a trip, Shane. The purpose of our excursion was actually quite exciting. A large international clothing retailer had invited Hannah and I to New York City to model for an advertising campaign. It's Abercrombie, if anyone's wondering. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we do not give that detail. Did I not say that? It's fine. I can take it out. They didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. (laughs) It's fine. It's funny just because I mentioned Abercrombie earlier in this episode. Oh, you did. You're right. This is an Abercrombie heavy episode. Abercrombie, as you'll hear, you did nothing wrong. You didn't do this, Abercrombie. You were great. All right, so we were modeling for an advertising campaign. Their invitation was another one of those are we dreaming moments that speckled the rise of our YouTube channel. The stories of ableism and discriminatory inaccessibility that you're about to read are in no way a reflection of this brand or its employees. (laughs) Working with them was fantastic, and their team had very little to no control over the situations that arose. And we aren't just saying that because they paid us to wear their clothing. (laughs) Minutes later, while enjoying the lounge and waiting for our flight to arrive, a member of the airline's administration approached us. She apologized. Do you actually remember, Shane? Th- there was another employee that saw it happen. Yeah, I do remember. That's why this person found out. Yeah. And like she went and got a supervisor. It was way more uncomfortable than we share. Yeah. And we were just trying to get through the story in our chapter. Yeah, it was way worse. But it was a whole ordeal. She brought the, the groper they were to like, apologize. Do you want, yeah, they were like, do you want to talk to her? We were like, no, no. not really. <laughs> 
No, it was awkward. It's yeah. fine. Anyway, she apologized for the groping and assured us that the groper would undergo <sighs> disability awareness training to learn why her actions were inappropriate. Lesson one. Do not grope. <laughs> Don't touch people. <laughs> we thanked them for handling the situation with the gravity it deserved. Our trip to New York City was a quick one, less than two full days. But in the 40-something hours, we experienced so many moments of disability-related stigma and inaccessibility that we can organize the recap of this trip around ableist occurrences alone. Buckle up. Day one, 1.35 p.m. The grope happens. And that really just set up. Everything that was about to tell him. Day one, 4.47 p.m. We landed at LaGuardia with our excitement soaring. The view of the New York City skyline from the airplane window filled us with anticipation for what was arguably going to be one of the most prominent partnerships we'd ever taken part in. This was a legit modeling deal, and it felt like the hours of hard work that we poured into our YouTube channel were beginning to pay off. With this ad campaign, we'd be bringing the authentic story of disability to a huge national level. Unfortunately, our starry-eyed vision of cruising into the city in style would need to wait. My wheelchair was missing. <laughs> the airplane deboarded its passengers while the three of us waited in our seats. This was standard. Once the grounds crew brought my chair up from the underbelly of the plane, Liz would exit to reassemble all the fragile parts that we removed for safety. All airlines are notoriously bad at keeping wheelchairs intact, so we take it upon ourselves to disassemble as much as possible— lest we arrive at a location and find my wheelchair in pieces, which happens to disabled travelers thousands of times each year. Once Liz completes her portion of the mission, Hannah unstraps me from my customized car seat contraption that I need to sit comfortably in an airline chair. She carries me like a sack of potatoes down the length of the airplane, bopping my head on the rows of seats, both by accident and on purpose to be funny. And the whole way down the aisle, I'm going, watch my feet, watch my feet, watch my feet. Yeah, it's all about the feet. She puts me back in my wheelchair and we finish the reassembly around my body at the door of the plane. When the deep plane chain process goes smoothly, it takes about 20 to 25 extra minutes from the time the airplane is completely empty. When complicating factors arise, like, say, a missing wheelchair, there's no telling how long it might take. Hannah, you are doing a lovely job reading, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to read it all or is your voice okay? Do you want to read? I, I don't mind reading. Because I'm fine, but okay. you can read. I'll, I can read. Okay, read from I'll an read airline employee. Apps. You can set up my legs. You don't have to hold it. Really? I can hold it. Really? Your arms are get tired. You're not reading for that long. Your, mouth, ready? your mouth will give out before my arm. An airline employee came to our seats on the plane after the rest of the passengers had exited. He was holding a clipboard. We were having some trouble locating your wheelchair, Miss Shiver Hall. Nothing to worry about. I'm positive it will turn up. <laughs> He spoke as if my wheelchair was a loose creature that was stampering around the airport, evading all employees. <laughs> Again, the three of us wore faces of shock. That seemed to be a developing theme. We waited. Five minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes. The flight attendants on board were gracious and extremely apologetic throughout the ordeal. It wasn't their fault in the slightest, but it was kind of them to hang around and chat with us while we waited anxiously. After an hour, we overheard a radio message near the front of the airplane. My wheelchair had been found at the wrong terminal, and it was on its way up to the door now. Phew. Day 1, 7, 10 p.m. A waitress at the pizza joint we found in Brooklyn leaned over me and asked, with painfully slow enunciation, as if addressing a toddler, Are you enjoying New York City, big guy? Day 2. I think we should... Pause here. Yes. Take a trip break. Get a wholesome salt water. Oh, I don't need to do that. Clear out our lungs. Uh-huh. Do a few heart wheels, and then we'll be back with, with the rest. Two. And it gets 10 times more ridiculous yes. from here. So we'll be right back. You guys know that we both love Skims, Shane and I. And uh, what bra are you wearing today? Skims, Shane. Duh. Duh. <laughs> And the bra I'm wearing is from the Fits Everybody collection, which I need to tell you about. It is so stretchy and soft. It melts onto your body, and it is unbelievably comfortable. I love things that feel like they melt onto my body. I know. Mm. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for every body. I've worn Skims for a long time, but just a couple months ago was my first time trying the Fits Everybody collection, and I immediately fell in love. We love that inclusivity. Yeah. 
My go-to for every day is the t-shirt bra, but I also love the triangle bralette. I go back and forth. I love them all. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight and molds to your body. The buttery soft fabric stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape, meaning you get a perfect fit every time. And it's available in sizes extra, extra small to 4X. You can believe the hype. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The Fits Everybody collection and more perfect fit essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, you get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know we sent you. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select our show in the drop down menu that follows. All right, we're back and it is day two, 930 a.m. Mm. The timeline for the photo shoot was extremely stringent. We'd been briefed by the brand ahead of time that arriving at 10 a.m. sharp was crucial. Our plan was to call an accessible taxi for transportation to and from the photo shoot. But just to play it safe, we booked the closest hotel possible, which was still a 30-minute walk from the refurbished warehouse that they'd chosen for the location. The night before, we had called an accessible taxi service and ordered a car for 9.30 a.m. That's just funny because it was like a five-minute drive. And we were like, we'll give it 30 minutes. We were like, just assume the worst. Yeah. (laughs) The weather forecast for photo shoot day was a balmy 37 degrees Fahrenheit with heavy rain expected. (laughs) Hannah and I left our hotel after the taxi service called to say they were out front. The nerves from our upcoming modeling debut, added with the fact that a nice drizzle was already coming down outside, coupled with the precise arrival requirements, had both of us in a state of mild panic. (laughs) I just remember, like, the stress. I I stress out about arriving to recreational activities on time. I know. This was, like, a hard... You must be there at 10. Yeah, or, or the day's you, ruined. Or you will not be in this campaign. I know. And we, like, my stress all those off the roof. Yep. The mildness of that panic blossomed into panic aplenty as we stepped outside and saw exactly zero wheelchair accessible vehicles waiting for us in the rain. Instead, we saw a standard sedan and its driver who was beckoning us in his direction. Mr. Sean Burkaw, he asked. <laughs> Yes, I said, looking down at my phone to see the time change to 9.35 a.m. I am your driver. Where are we headed today? We ordered a wheelchair taxi, I said. Yes. He hopped out of his car and popped open the trunk. I will put it in here. He mimicked a lifting motion. My chair weighs 400 pounds and it doesn't fold, so it won't fit in there anyway, I said, becoming exasperated. I could feel the minutes ticking past. Do you have any vehicles with ramps? The dispatch office assured me the car would be wheelchair accessible. Yes, I will put your wheelchair in here. See? (sighs) Again, he pointed to the tiny trunk. We told him it wasn't going to work and went back inside the hotel to consider our options. A helpful employee at the front desk immediately got on the phone with several more companies that claimed to have wheelchair accessible vehicles. The earliest available pickup was in an hour, much too late for our scheduled arrival. We talked it over and decided there was no choice but to walk. Run, actually, as we now only had about 20 minutes until we needed to be on set. (laughs) Hannah whipped a poncho out of my book bag and secured it around me in my chair. Off we went into the cold, blustery, rain-soaked streets of New York. It was so cold and so windy and and so rainy. Yep. (laughs) Day two, 9.49 a.m. About halfway to the venue, we came to the end of a city block to discover that it did not have a curb cut. (laughs) Crucial time was wasted while we doubled back to cross over to the other side of the street. How on earth did a city sidewalk in New York effing city, I'm not saying, I'm just, it's written out in the book. Yeah, we're believing it for YouTube. <laughs> can still be inaccessible in 2019 It was completely beyond us. We fumed as the pouring rain soaked us to the bone. Hannah broke the tension with a joke. I hope their creative team was looking for a a windswept, lost at sea look because that's what they're getting. I do remember I took a a selfie of us on the way there where we're just like... We just like disheveled. (laughs) We're like city, like street rats, like sewer rats, all wet. Day two, 10, 11 a.m. We were late and upon arrival, we found that the ramp installed by the venue to comply with accessibility regulations was nowhere close to code. It was a giant slab of steel laid across the staircase, much too steep for me to ascend without Hannah pushing from behind with all her strength. And it was wet. The brand was understandably horrified to hear about our struggles that morning and they completely sympathized with our physical states. Time for hair and makeup. (laughs) Day two, 1130 a.m. 
As the wonderful photo shoot wrapped, Hannah and I were reveling in our fashionista glory when a representative from the brand gave us some bad news. The next available wheelchair taxi or car was in two hours. They welcomed us to hang out on set for that time, but we had another business meeting to get to, so we did the entire soggy trip back to the hotel by foot and wheel once again. That The way back to the hotel yeah. was like kind of fun. Yeah, because we were like, there's no problem now. It started raining like even harder. Yeah, It was like a downpour at that point. We were just like on cloud nine yeah. because everything had like, worked out. Worked out. But they didn't kick us out. Yep. It was fine. All right. Uh, after this experience, Hannah and I would like to share some advice if you're ever traveling to New York City in a wheelchair. Schedule your car service three years in advance. <laughs> Day two, 9.45 p.m. During a late dinner, after a mostly uneventful rest of the day, a waiter brought me a surprise brownie for dessert. Confused, we explained that it must be the wrong table. However, he insisted that an anonymous guest nearby had ordered it for me because they are happy to see you smiling. Writing about this one, we anticipate some of you will question what makes this encounter ableist. A free brownie from a nice stranger? How could that be misconstrued as offensive? Such entitled, whiny millennials we must be. Here's the thing. If the mystery brownie benefactor just liked giving out free brownies to random strangers, and he just so happened to pick me by total chance, fine, great. We're assholes and we misjudge this generous human being. If, however, his charity was targeting me for a specific reason— Perhaps that he felt pity seeing someone in a wheelchair and figured a brownie might cheer up my bleak existence, then it's ableism. Hannah, for instance, has never been given free food from a stranger simply because someone was happy to see her smiling. We venture to bet that almost every able-bodied person reading this has never been given free food, free money, or free gifts by a stranger. It happens to Shane on the regular, and it's usually not from a mystery person. It's usually someone walking up to us and saying, it warms my heart to see you out here having a good time. Here's $20. It's a sweet perk of being disabled, but it's rooted in ableism and makes us cringe. I just like to say that in the past month, we've had our meals, mm -hmm. dining out, paid for twice. Yep. By anonymous people by in anonymous the restaurant. anonymous people who are just like... And it, that's the thing is you're not doing it for anyone else. No. Like, I've never, ever had my meal paid for unless I'm with Shane. And it's not like fans, you know, yeah. like if someone was like, I love your videos, like I follow yeah. you guys or I've read your books. Like it's never that. It's always anonymous. And the message is like, you know, we I, hope it brightens your life. It <laughs> happens so often that there have been times when Hannah and I are eating out and I've told her, yes, do you see that person over there? They're going to pay for our meal. Yeah. I can tell just by the way, someone is like watching you. At us, yeah, you know? I know. Like if they sit there the whole time just grinning yeah. at me, I'm like, my nose is getting paid for. <laughs> yes, I will have dessert. Thank you. <laughs> it is really nice, but it's it's just a little uncomfortable because it's not a normal thing. Yeah. Go ahead. Back to the story. Okay. As a couple, Hannah and I face ignorance like all of these above moments on a daily basis. That's not an exaggeration used for emphasis. Every day. It happens so much that a major part of our relationship centers around discussing it, trying to better understand it, and sharing it with all of you to hopefully one day get rid of it. The brownie was delicious, but Hannah ate most of it. True. The end. I do love a free dessert. That is a perk. You get to eat all the free food that I'm giving. I do. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. I love that chapter. That Me too. trip was so much fun and so ridiculous. I know. I forgot some of those things. Like Now I remember, but it's been... That was when I was still in college. It's been like five years. Did you remember that you're an Abrahambi model? I do. I do remember that part. <laughs> I loved that photo. I actually, I, I mean, I was terrified, but it was a great experience. I thought you looked really good. I did not like the haircut that I chose for mm. that event. Yeah. We like cut my hair really strangely. Yeah. A few I days before. I didn't mind it. It was short. It was yeah. very short on top. It just wasn't my normal George Clooney. Yeah, because we like, were like, this cloth. is important. Let's get you a haircut. And then it was a little different than normal. And you were like, <laughs> well, I don't know if I like it. Also flat on my head from the rain. Yeah, there was only so, so much they could do with your quarter inch of hair. Right. <laughs> uh, anyway, that chapter and many more chapters about our relationship and other couples Yes. relationships will be in our book which is coming out next year yay, yay. i'm so excited obviously we'll share a lot more as it develops and as we have pre-order information and all that yeah it'll be a while till then but we'll we'll continue keeping you updated yes it, all right it's our passion yes. so we hope you check it out
If you enjoyed this episode, please like, comment, review, give us a, you know, five star rating wherever you're watching. And it's a junkyard out there. And if you're a wheelchair user, you get in for free. Wow. If you want, no, pay up. <laughs> Wheelchairs, come on in. You seeing all of you smile? <laughs> Warms this jump master's heart. Bye, everyone. Bye.